Welcome to the Waukesha Gas Engine Customer Support Video Series. Uh, this particular video is on EngCalc and specifically running the program and saving files. Um, please watch one of our previous videos where we um, instructed you how to download the program from the INEO portal and load it onto your computer. Now in running the program, we are going to come over to the EngCalc 4.3 folder where we saved it. Again, remember it cannot be saved on a cloud-based uh, storage like OneDrive. It must be saved to your hard drive. And the two files, the data file and the EngCalc program need to be saved in the same folder. That way the links between these two programs work properly. So when we uh, double click on our EngCalc program, it will open in Excel. Remember, you need to have Excel and a PDF reader in your uh, <clears throat> uh, um, hard drive software. So um, once the EngCalc program opens, we, it's pretty intuitive to fill in the, uh, fill in the cells. Um, some cells have pull downs, other cells you enter in your uh, selected data. So we can select power gen, mechanical drive, and gas compression. We're going to do a gas compression example today. Um, we can select our engine family. Um, when we do that, it will automatically populate the engine models within that family. Uh, we're going to do an example today with a 7044 GSI S5. Notice as soon as we selected that engine, it entered in some of the standard parameters like jacket water temperature and intercooler temperature. Um, inlet air temperature, that's one of those fields that we enter in based on our site conditions. We're going to enter in uh, a relatively high temperature of 130 degrees and an elevation of 1,000 feet. Um, now notice the inlet air temperature is equal to our intercooler water temperature. That would give us um, incorrect cooling. So once we are uh, in here, I'm going to show you what the program will show you if it senses or sees that error. Now we could manually select uh, a higher auxiliary water temperature, which would be required to get some cooling if our inlet air temperature or the ambient is 130. Um, we're going to leave it here so you can see um, through my example what the program will do for you. So we enter in our parameters. Again, um, I'm doing everything in Imperial or English units. I can also select metric over on the side. When I switch back and forth between uh, metric and Imperial units, um, notice the values will change along with the units. So we're going to go back to the English units. And anytime I enter in new uh, site conditions, whether it be ambient air, um, RPM, I can select whatever RPM I want. Um, whenever I change any of those parameters, I always want to recalculate the maximum allowable power. So at this point, I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on Calculate Maximum Allowable Power. And this is the example that I wanted to show you. Notice it says the high ambient temperatures may require increased intercooler water temperature. Do I want to select 140? Um, and I can say yes. And then it will readjust everything and uh, enter in that value. Now it takes a little bit for it to calculate that because it's now going back to that data table and it's pulling up new, uh, new information that's related to the 140 degree um, intercooler temperature. So um, once it's done calculating, I can see that I get my full power. Now, the default fuel analysis is for pipeline quality natural gas. I see 91.8 and 935.8 BTUs. So let's go over to our fuel analysis and um, <clears throat> enter in something that's a little bit uh, uh, hotter with a higher BTU than the 935 lower heating value. And we'll see that as that BTU goes up, we're going to see that the WKI goes down. Now, <clears throat> down here, we will see any kind of notes or cautions come up. So notice on pipeline quality and natural gas, we're good to go. There's no cautions. But as soon as I enter something in that is um, heavier than propane, 
it will have a tendency to liquefy under our operating parameters of pressures and temperatures. So our engines cannot have any liquids um, coming into the fuel system. So as soon as we enter in something such as isobutane, and let's put in a, a 4% there, um, let's, <clears throat> and uh, we see automatically it says no water or hydrocarbon condensates are allowed and the engine requires liquid removal. Now, <clears throat> um, support on how to remove those liquids can be found in our uh, technical data sheet on fuel gas specifications. But ultimately, uh, we want you to have a coalescing filter to pull out any kind of liquids before it gets into the engine. Now, notice also I added in that 4% isobutane, which took our total fuel composition up to 104, and it says it doesn't add up to 100%, so it gives us another error there. So let's go back and uh, change our, our methane down to 83 and create a, uh, <clears throat> a fuel here that will be representative of something that we would see in the gas patch with a little bit higher BTU and uh, lower WKI. So let's take that propane and uh, take that up to uh, uh, 4% as well. And let's put in 3% uh, ethane. And let's put in 2% uh, normal butane. And then we're going to go all the way down to hexane. And we're going to add in 3% there. Um, let's change the uh, CO2 to 1%. And now we're at 100 and we see we took our WKI from 90, almost 92, down to 55, and we saw the BTU content go from 935 up to 1213. Now, again, we changed our fuel, so we need to go back to inputs, and we're going to have to calculate maximum allowable power. Now, while that's calculating, um, it's important that Anytime, again, we change the operating parameters that we re-click um, on the Calculate Maximum Allowable Power. So here we see um, that fuel change gave us a D-rate of almost 100 horsepower, took us down to 1806. Now I know that the uh, um, Series 5 engine has a very good uh, fuel tolerance and at 55.2, should not give us a D-rate. So what I suspect here is our inlet air temperature at 130 is what's contributing to that. So we're going to take that down to 100. We're going to go back to our standard 130 degree intercooler temperature. And we're going to re-click on that Calculate Maximum Allowable Power. And we will see that um, it's calculating pulling up new data tables, and it takes us right back to the 1900 horsepower. So it's not the fuel alone, it was the fuel and the high ambient air temperature, which required us to use a higher intercooler temperature, which gave us that D-rate. So make sure that you enter in all of the parameters correctly for your site to see if you actually have a D-rate. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the performance data sheet. <clears throat> now the performance data sheet it will show us um, our general uh, site conditions, and then it will give us our power, if there's any overload available, what our heat rejection numbers are, induction airflow, um, exhaust temp, all related to the, uh, the specific operating conditions which we entered in. Um, the emissions out, that will be based on what parameters we selected for the catalyst. Now, it defaults to customer catalyst, so these will be engine out. Notice that's engine out. Um, we can select uh, the default of grams per brake horsepower hour, or if we want to look at uh, one of the other units, like milligrams per normalized meter cube, we can do that. I can adjust my O2 reference between uh, zero and all the way up to 15%. So I can select that, <clears throat> and it will give me the appropriate output. Um, in milligrams per normalized meter cube. Now we're going to default back to our grams per brake horsepower hour and then we're going to actually um, go back to our inputs and now let's select our catalyst. So over here <clears throat> we had customer catalyst. We can now select um, one of the two impact options. 
we're going to select the 0.15 gram NOx 0.3 CO and we're going to come back over and we're going to view our performance data. Now it's pulling data from that other um, uh, EngCalc data file. That's why they have to be in the same file, uh, same folder. As it's doing that, requested power 1900 cannot be met, but that's okay. Um, just click on that. Notice it said uh, 1900 can't be met, but we can make 1900. So um, <clears throat> sometimes the EngCalc program will have a little bit of a glitch. Um, just accept that and it'll give you what your maximum power is over here. So now we look at um, our engine, uh, our emissions, and now we see instead of saying engine out, they say catalyst out. We have uh, 0.15 and 0.13 and then um, all the other emissions associated with that. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to save that, um, that engine data. Now when we save the engine data, it will save it as a PDF. Now it will automatically save it in the same folder where the EngCalc uh, files are kept. And we're going to label this test1. And it's going to save it as a PDF file. We're going to click save. <clears throat> it's going to tell me that PDF file was, was created. And we can go back over to our EngCalc folder where we had three files before and now I have this fourth one. Now this fourth one is a PDF. I can open up that PDF and it gives me a data sheet in a nice format with all of my heat rejection numbers, fuel consumption, my available power at whatever um, percent I, uh, I selected and then it gives me my uh, my emissions level and again it will print out whether uh, if I selected an impact option it'll give me catalyst out if I select a customer option or a customer catalyst it will give me engine out and that's information that you would share with your catalyst supplier um, if you're sourcing that through a third party so they know how to spec out the catalyst um, <clears throat> one of the things that you see on the PDF sheet is not only do we give you the um, heat rejection numbers for each of the circuits, but it will also give you heat rejection, rejection sizing. Um, and that sizing is based off of a tolerance of 8% plus a 5% pad. So if we go to the notes, we see there's note 12, which will tell us that. So this is what we want to use for our cooler sizing. Now that PDF sheet is saved. And I can copy it, save it wherever I want, attach it to an email. Now, if I want to um, save the working file, which is the Excel file, I need to go back to inputs. Never go up and do file save. Okay, that's not what we that's not how we want to save it. Um, we want to save it within the EngCalc program. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do save project and we're going to save it as test one and when we save that it's going to save an excel file it's going to again save it to the same location where the ngcalc files are so we see our test one as a pdf and we see test one as an excel file i can go back and open that up at any time with whatever uh, data i had in there so say i had a specific fuel sample and i was running a uh, 7044 GSI in our example here and I wanted to run a 9394 or a 275 GL plus I can open that file and I can go in and work with it so that's why I call it a working file and it's an Excel file now when I want to open that I'm not going to open it right from that file because if I do I get a file with a lot of junk that doesn't mean anything it's not in my nice format at all so what I want to do is I'm going to close that out and I want to go back to my EngCalc program. Now once I'm in my EngCalc program, this is where I want to open it. So I want to save the Excel file and I want to open it from within the EngCalc program. So here I'm going to say um, open project. I can come back over to that test one. I can open it and it will repopulate with the data that I had in here. Now, <clears throat> uh, 
um, that is how we're going to save that project. So one of the things that uh, um, some people overlook is the notes. Now notice over here it says requires option code 1008B or 1008SB for that catalyst. I can click on return and if I had selected my 140 degree um, <clears throat> catalyst, again, I'm sorry, intercooler operating temperature, I'm going to calculate uh, max allowable maximum power. I went over to my data sheet. Yeah, let's go back to inputs. Calculate maximum allowable power. And it's calculating. And you can see just going to the 140 degree aux water with that hot fuel <clears throat> gives me a slight D rate, not as much as my ambient air. Uh, added in there, but it did give me a slight rate. Now if I go back over to my notes, notice there's two notes here. One that says I required um, the uh, impact option code, and the other one says I need option code 1106 for the 140 degree uh, or 60C auxiliary water thermostat. So make sure you go and check your notes for any special features that are required for your operating parameters. So that is a quick run through of how to operate the EngCalc program, what your inputs are, um, and what they will uh, what they will give you as an output. So um, with that, um, I'd like to thank you for watching the EngCalc running the program and saving the files, and look forward to seeing you at the next video.